Hey everyone, today I just want to go over a couple event listeners. Namely, I want to go over the click event listener, submit, and also the change event listener. So to get everything started, I'll create the HTML and I will give it the title of event listeners. And right above the closing body tag, I will create a script tag and I will give it the source app.js. And that is right here in this directory right here. So to get things started, I will go ahead and click up, I will create a button and let's give it an ID that'll be equal to click example. And the button, I will make it say click me. And let's give it an exclamation as well. So I'll just copy this ID because I'll need to reference it in my JavaScript file. I'll say var and actually let's say let click example equal document dot query selector click example and now I'll be able to access it by saying click example and then I'll add that event listener of type click and when I when I triggered that event click I want it to run a function and we'll just make it say console we'll just console log uh, I've been clicked for now I've been clicked and let's run this in our browser to see it work so there is the button let's open up the inspector and then console when we click it it says I've been clicked so the next event listener we want to talk about is going to be a submit you typically see submit in a form and I don't want it to have an action but I do want to give it an ID of type submit example inside the form I'll create an input of type text and I'll give it in since I want the, uh, this text I will give it an ID of text example and then right underneath that text example that's going to be for for text input I'm going to create a button of type submit and the value I'll make it say submit me now before we add the JavaScript let's see what that looks like in our browser okay so we see we've got a place where we can enter in our text and we can see a button that says submit me if we open up the elements and get into body we can see how that's structured in the HTML as well so great let's grab this ID because I'll need to reference it in my JavaScript file I'll say let submit example equal document dot query selector and I will put the hash symbol and paste submit example and let's give myself a little bit of space so I'll go ahead and grab submit example and I will add the event listener of type submit and when I triggered that event I want to run a function that runs this code console log hello and we're gonna see a little we're gonna see some unexpected behavior but let's just see what we get out of this so let's go ahead and open this up in my browser I'll refresh it and get into console and if I click on this button that says submit me we saw that hello flash on the screen but then quickly go away and you'll see it like that and I do think this is going to be a submit event listener because if I were to hit enter once I have uh, text focused we'll see that same behavior as well so we'll keep seeing that uh, what we need to do is prevent that that flashing of the screen the refreshing so when I see if you look at the refresh symbol as well you see that every time you submit it, it's uh, trying to reload a screen you don't want it to do that so to prevent that behavior we have to grab that event access the event and just say prevent default and you'll need to do this anytime you have a button inside of a form it'll happen every single time so let's see what happens now when I refresh it so I'll just add some text and I'll hit enter. I notice it said hello, that's good. Let's also hit this button and it also says hello, that's great. Let's get uh, this text. So I will create a place in memory and kind of reference that. So let's say let text example equal document dot query selector 
and I'll grab that ID. I'll just paste the ID and make sure I put the hash symbol in there. And let's give us a little bit more space. And now let's just console log text example dot value. All right, let's see this in our browser. So I'll refresh it. I'll enter in some text and let's see what happens in the console when I press enter. We got the text that we just entered. So let me say uh, Thomas. And now when I click the button, now you see that it says Thomas. So this is happening. This is grabbing the text now. All right. The next event listener we want to talk about is for change. And typically when you're seeing change, it's going to be within us within a select tag. So I will create the select tag and I want to give it an ID called change example. Oh, well, I realized I just gave it the name, but let's go ahead and delete this and change it instead of name to ID. And inside of the select, I want to create an option. So I'll create an option. I'll give it a value of um, option A. And I'll say this is the first option. And let's go ahead and I'll just copy this and paste it down below as option B. So option, change that to B. And instead of say, saying this is the first option, we'll make sure that this says this is the second option. All right, before going any further, let's take a look at what this looks like in, the H in, what, in our browser. So when I refresh the screen, uh, now I've got this little drop down menu that I can click on. And what we want to do is we want to see, we want to put an event listener and anytime it changes, we want to console log the, the current option it's on or the value that's, uh, that's being put in here. All right, so to do that, uh, let's go ahead and go under here and copy this example, this ID. I will say let's equal document dot query selector. Let's paste in change example. And then I'll come down here and I'll say change example dot add event listener. And the type of event listener I'm putting on it is going to be change. Whenever I've triggered that event, I want it to run a function that will console log uh, change example example dot value. All right. Now let's run this in our browser and see what we get out of this. When I refresh it, I will change it to this is the second option. And we see that it says option B, option B right here. And so if I click it to the first one, we see that it says option A. This is cool because any, any kind of data you want saved into value, you can create your own little message for it. And this message, it, this can just be for the user, but what you end up using is value inside of here. Great. So I hope this was helpful. See you later.